Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Short and I'm with Chauvet DJ. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us today to talk about lighting. And we'd like to welcome everybody to the Guitar Center Music Mentor Online Series. It's a pleasure for us to be here. And we're going to talk a lot about basic lighting and why that's important to you as an entertainer and how you can actually start building your very first lighting rig. We know many of you are band people as well as DJs. Our name is Chauvet DJ, but we talk to any mobile entertainer who would enjoy stimulating their audiences and enhancing their performances with lighting. So that's what today is all about. Once again, thank you for being here. So one of the first basic questions is, why is lighting even important? I think at the base level of what we see and experience as humans, we respond to visual stimulus. It's another enhancement, another level to your performance. So whether you're a DJ or you're a band, you want to use tools that can enhance your performance and stimulate your audience. We know from studies of basic human behavior what makes people respond to different stimuli, visual stimulus being one of those things. We know one of the reasons people even dance on a dance floor is because they're responding to various stimuli not only lighting the visual element, but also the stimulus of other people moving rapidly near them. So in short, lighting is one of those visual elements that can help fill a dance floor. And that's something that we all want as entertainers, whether we're DJs or in a band. So we want to use things that are in our arsenal. We want to develop tools that are gonna help our performance. And it's true that lighting, is, lighting fixtures are not musical instruments, but they are an enhancement. And just like getting the very best PA speakers, getting the very best amplifiers and microphones, lighting is very similar to that. Um, and with DJs, it's the very best mixers and controllers and things like that. We want to help entertainers use the very best lighting fixtures they can to add to those tools that entertainers are using to create exciting performances. So it's all about how the audience that's in front of you, whether they're guests on a dance floor at a wedding reception or whether they're, they're guests at a nightclub watching a band, how are they perceiving you? Do they perceive you as someone who, as an act who cares and who is professional and has these tools at their disposal and is using them effectively? or are you just performing in a dark corner of some club somewhere? Um, when we talk about audience perception, you know, perception is reality. And you might be surprised at how much even just a little color wash on a stage can change people's perception. Um, for instance, look at this room here. It's all lit up. We have all kinds of different fixtures going on. Look at the difference between this and this. As you can see, it's a huge difference, and I, I can't tell you how many bands and karaoke jocks I have seen performing in dark little corners of nightclubs and bars, and it always amazes me. I mean, I know that as artists, we all think that we're the second coming of Lennon and McCartney or whoever it is, um, and that our music and our performance is gonna be enough to engage these audiences. But the truth is, is these people are here or at the nightclub, wherever they are, to have a good time, to have a drink, to be entertained a little bit, to have a conversation. As hard, it is, as hard as it is to hear sometimes, they're really not there in most cases to hear our original tunes. You know, so we need to at least give them a little bit of a show that will help get their attention and we'll get our music and our performances paid attention to a little bit more. It's all about perception. Lighting can do that. Um, Speaking of karaoke jocks, this is so important. I can't tell you how many I've seen doing this in the dark. The whole point of karaoke is to let guests feel like they're the star for just a little bit, just a few minutes during a song. And one simple light fixture can make them feel that way. If they're bathed in color, if they're spotlighted, it's amazing the effect that can have and also the effect it can have on your pocket and the amount of gigs that you're booking because people are starting to come to your shows because you have those enhancements. It's really important. The great news about all of this is that effective lighting has gotten more portable, 
more affordable, lighter, smaller, easier to set up and tear down. So it, it's, it's, it's not hard to create an effective light show. And many of the products are available right there at your local guitar center or wherever else you might get your gear from. It's, um, and, and it's really easy to do this. And that's what this session is all about, is basically setting up your very first lighting rig. Now, there are a lot of different lighting fixtures out there that all do different things. And, you know, I know it can get overwhelming when it's something you don't work with every day. Um, a lot of lighting beginners make the mistake of trying to do too much too soon. Um, so you don't, you don't need 100 lighting fixtures like we have in this showroom here uh, with big light board controllers and everything else. You want to keep it simple, you want to keep it basic, and, and want it to be easy to control so you don't have to take your mind off of your performance as much as possible. Think about the effect that you want to create, and once you know what the different fixtures can do, you can pick a couple representative fixtures to get those jobs done. Plus, nobody wants to load all of that gear, a ton of gear, and take up the time it takes to set that up and tear it all down. We're trying to make things quicker, lighter, more portable. Um, so to, to get you started on this, this lighting journey, if you will, um, there's a couple things that can help you, and one of those things we want to make sure everybody's aware of are some basic terms. You know, what are we talking about when we talk about this or that? Um, so we want to make sure that everybody's familiar with the kind of things that you will hear when you're shopping for lighting gear, so you can kind of have a little more education about that. Um, the first term you're obviously going to hear a lot of is LED. LED stands for light emitting diode. Um, that's gonna, not gonna be so important to you when you're shopping for fixtures, but know that LEDs are, uh, they're much more energy efficient, they last a lot longer, they don't generate the heat, they don't draw the power that incandescent fixtures do. So this is really the future of lighting. And, a light, a light emitting diode is the small uh, unit that glows or emits light when electrical voltage is applied to it. So a lot of LED fixtures are made up of lots of different LED units, and that's what that means. So my advice is to shop for LED fixtures whenever possible. If they're incandescent and you have to gel them and things like that, um, those are still great fixtures, but just understand they're going to generate a lot of heat, they're going to get hot, they'll probably have duty cycles, which means a specified amount of time you can even keep them on before you have to shut them off to cool down. LEDs are the future of lighting and that's what LED means. You'll also hear us refer a lot to RGB or RGBA. This just means the colors that we're talking about. So a tri-color LED light, for instance, is RGB, red, green, blue which are always the three basic colors that all color mixing comes from in terms of LED lighting. We also can add amber, which would be RGBA. We can also add white, RGBAW. Um, and now we actually have hex technology, which is RGBAW and UV light, which is uh, black light, obviously. And a lot of people wonder why black light is even useful on things like a wedding reception uh, where it's not a rave or a Halloween party or something. And that's true, um, black light by itself creates those cool effects that you may not use on every gig, but more importantly, it creates, when you're mixing mo many colors together, it creates such rich, vibrant, dynamic blends of color that you can't get without UV. So, Hex is great technology, um, and, and this is all referring to how we mix colors. So if you're trying to get to a white color, for instance, and you only have a tricolor LED, RGB, all you do is mix those three colors to equal levels, and it will create some version of white. Um, that's why when you can add an actual white to a color, it becomes uh, a genuine white. And it makes a difference. So this is, that's what we're talking about. Literally, millions of colors are possible when you're mixing colors using this technology. So whenever you hear RGB, RGBA, RGBAW, that's what that means. And it's, the reason why this is important, too, 
another note about color mixing is because when you're, you're, you might be trying to match decor. Um, now, if you're a band in a nightclub, it's not so important about specifically matching colors. But if you're a mobile DJ, for instance, or a wedding band, um, you may be more interested in being able to match the, the colors of the bridal party and the decor in that ballroom. So you want to match things like linens and dresses and things like that. Color mixing gives you those, those, uh, that ability to do that. And we even have battery powered fixtures, which we'll get into, um, where you can, as you're selling your services, you can upsell your services and charge more money for providing some of these lighting features. And you can actually look at a swatch of color from what the bridal party colors are and then match that right on the spot in front of your client with a portable battery powered light that does these color mixing things. It's really amazing. So it's not just about turning your audience on, it's also about making more money and making the upsell. So keep that in mind as well. Um, um, in, in many colors, the, the, the colors are mixed together at, um, in, in the light, in the LED itself before it comes out of the light. Um, some fixtures have a color wheel in them that turns to create different colors. There's different technologies which you should be aware of how your light is creating color. Um, but we're going to get into individual fixtures in just uh, a little bit to give you some suggestions on simple fixtures that are going to be really effective for you in your first lighting rig. The other term that you're probably going to hear a lot about that we are not going to get into specifically today because it's a little advanced is the term DMX. DMX stands for digital multiplex and all that means is that, that is a, this is a digital standard protocol for controlling lights digitally. Um, again, talking about DMX at this point is a little bit advanced, you know, because you can actually control your light show and create light shows and save them to perform later with things like DMX. Um, it, right, again, right now, we're, we're gonna keep this a little bit more basic than DMX, but I want you to be aware that that's there and it's also easy to use once you get the hang of it, and it's a tool that's invaluable to many people using lighting, but it's not necessary at this point when you're building your first, your first lighting rig. But just know that DMX is a way to control lights digitally. Um, we're also gonna be talking a lot about wireless technology and battery-powered lights. This really is the future of lighting, and it's just what it sounds like. It is lights and DMX controllers that are battery powered, wireless. They're sending a wireless signal to a receiver in the light or to a receiver that's attached to the light to be able to control the lighting wirelessly. What's the advantage of this? Obviously, it saves huge time in setup and takedown. Um, and, and this is something we're all interested in. It's not just about saving time and getting out of the gig faster or being able to set up faster. Time is money. And, the more time you waste wrapping up cables and, and keeping track of where these cables go and wiring things up, um, the more time you're wasting, whether you could be doing other things and offering other services to your clients, to the nightclub, to the bar, whatever it is. So wireless technology is the future of lighting um, in terms of mobile entertainment for sure. The next thing I wanna to talk to you a little bit about is actual applications of lighting. So with that, let's take a look at the different types of lighting and a few representative fixtures in each of these categories. So here's the things you need to take into consideration when you're building your first rig. What lights do I actually need? What do these things do? What are the categories of lighting? So the first category I'd like to talk about is wash lighting. These are light fixtures that add a general color wash, a splash of color to a band, to a dance floor, to kind of create that mood. As you can see, even in this room, as you're looking at me standing here, there's different colors happening, and these are color washes. Um, color wash lights can change, they can do chase effects and things like that, but every lighting rig should have at least two color wash fixtures in them to give that nice ambiance to whatever space you're trying to light up. So I've got a couple examples of those right now um, and kind of different applications that can use them in. One big application is uplighting, which is a huge profit maker for mobile DJs and mobile entertainers, and we have fixtures that are great for that. Um, things like, uh, like I said, lighting a band stage, 
great effects for that. So let me start off with, as I mentioned, a couple of wireless fixtures, a couple of battery powered uh, fixtures. The first one is this here. This is called the Easy Par, and this is an Easy Par 56, and that has to do with the size of the fixture. These come in different uh, diameters, and, and the Easy in this uh, name of this fixture is because it's battery powered. You don't need cables to, to operate these. So you can use these in uplighting situations around a room. You can uh, warm trussing with them. You can put them inside truss. You can mount them upside down and do down lighting onto a band or performer, singer. Um, but this is a great basic wash light that's part of our EZ series of fixtures. Um, and whenever you see that EZ in front of a Chauvet DJ fixture, that means it's battery powered. And as you can see, it's just a matter of turning this on and you know, this thing is off and running. So you can set them to do automatic programs. Um, you can set them to one color, set it and forget it. There's lots of different options and we'll get into controls and things you want to think about like that in a minute. But this is one example of a PAR fixture that is a great fixture for color wash applications. Um, another brand new Chauvet DJ fixture is this. This is a, one of three new Freedom PAR fixtures, part of our Freedom battery powered wireless uh, fixture family. This happens to be the Freedom PAR Quad 4. The quad means it's quad color. And as you remember, RGBA. So this is RGBA and the four in the quad four name is there's four LEDs here. So this is a truly wireless fixture because what happens is this is it's got receiving and sending transmitting technology built right into the fixture itself. So when you're using things like wireless DMX control or wireless control of any sort these fixtures can talk to each other like almost like walkie-talkies. Um, again, getting into DMX and wireless control is maybe a conversation for another session, which we look forward to. But for now, know that this is a completely wireless option, um, a battery-powered fixture that's great for uplighting applications. So, and uplighting applications doesn't mean just lights around a ballroom. It can also mean uplighting a drum set or or putting these in in areas where you normally couldn't get lighting before. Uh, little nooks and crannies of spaces to light up a, a, a garden or a, you know, some fountain area, which can really enhance the special event space or the, the party space that you may be entertaining in. So another great example of a PAR fixture that is battery powered and wireless that gives great color wash technology. And for Bands and DJs and mobile entertainers of all kinds, to me, color washing doesn't get more easy or more convenient than the four bar fixture. I really wanted to show you guys this because as we know from experience as mobile entertainers, so much of what we do, so much of the time that we take doing what we do is involved with setup and takedown. That's a big question I hear from a lot of bands when it comes to lighting. Um, they barely want to set up their guitar amps and their drums, never mind lighting on top of that, but it just makes such a difference to a performance and to the audience's perception of that performance. Remember, I said perception is reality. This is a four bar unit. It's part of the, part of the four bar family we have here at Chauvet DJ. There are different four bar features. This one is one of my favorites because it's four PAR fixtures, again LEDs, you can see the diodes in there changing color, mounted to one bar. This bar comes all in one unit. And you can see how easy that is to, you put the, the stand up, you put the lights on the stand, you tighten it down, you're off and running. Um, the, the stand comes with the unit, comes with the lights, it comes with a convenient carrying case, and if that's not convenient enough, control has never gotten easier than the foot switch that's included with it as well. Because we know the other thing that you know, a lot of mobile entertainers don't want to concern themselves with as much is the learning curve involved in figuring out lighting control, bringing in lighting controllers, uh, additional computer software, and so forth. Um, the fact of the matter is lighting control is very easy and sleek, 
but we, we understand that feedback. And an option like the four bar and many of our other fixtures that have foot pedals like this couldn't be more convenient. I mean, literally, you can do uh, immediate blackouts just by hitting the pedal. Um, it's got preset um, programs built into it. You hit the blackout again, and the light comes back on. You can just set it to auto program, set it and forget it. Love the four bar, and there are features like this. So think about your color wash. Washing color is the basic level, if you will, of your lighting design and your lighting rig. So you'd like at least a couple of these fixtures. I know for many years as a band leader, I've been in bands my whole life, I used two of these on every gig, one on each side of the band from behind, lighting the band, and it was so effective wherever we went, and, and it really adds a nice effect. And again, because of the auto programs that are built in, you can, do, you can go right to sound active mode, and it becomes a dynamic sort of wash light that, that has effects and things like that. So think about that. Um, sound activation means, we haven't heard that term in this session yet, that there are microphones built right into the fixtures and just about every fixture that we have, and they can, the sensitivity of those microphones can be turned up or turned down, and they can pick up the music that you're playing and respond to them. So um, that's another great, convenient way to control the lights. Set it to sound activation mode and go. Set it to a preset mode with a foot switch and go. Black out quickly and go. And when the gig is over, take it off, put the stand away, put it in its case, and you're out of there. So um, that is a great example of one of my favorite quick mobile entertainer color wash lights, the four bar. Again, the Easy Par 56 and the Freedom Par Quad 4. Um, there are many different examples, so just pick a couple that are in your price range. You don't need to overdo it. Pick a couple wash fixtures that are going to wash the space. Take into consideration the space that you're using that you're going to be performing in and figure out what fixtures you're going to need. Now, let's take a look at the next category of lighting, effect lighting. Let's get this out of the way first. Easy to move. Now, the purpose of effect lighting is to create movement and to give a dynamic presentation to your show. These are lights that usually move and have some sort of design patterns moving, and that frenetic movement can actually be great for dancing because it's that visual stimulus that I was talking about. And there's lots of different categories of effect lighting. And to start things off, I want to talk a little bit about one of the most popular kinds of effect lighting, the moving head fixtures. And you can see here at the top of this truss, we have a lot of different moving head fixtures. The main characteristic of a moving head fixture is the yoke that the light actually sits into. And that yoke can turn 360 degrees and can also provide um, tilt. So you've got pan and tilt and rotation, and it really creates amazing looking beams, as you can see. Um, and so th those can be controlled, that movement can be controlled through DMX control, or as you can see, through sound activation or through automatic programs, whatever's easier for you. These things are mounted on top of a truss. They can be mounted inverted, obviously. Lots of different flexible options for moving headlights. And you can see the different sizes going up depending on what your needs are. Some of them are beams. Some of them are more designed for a spotlight effect. Some of them have zoom control. Um, these also are lights that have wheels in them. They have uh, gobo wheels. Gobos is something we haven't talked about yet. Gobos are sort of the design that is projected onto surfaces like monograms and other designs. Gobo stands for goes before optics. Um, just another technical term, but moving heads usually have a wheel in them that can change the gobos. They have a color wheel in them to change the color. So the moving heads are very dynamic effect lights. Um, they're sort of at the top scale of effect lighting for mobile entertainers, but there's lots of other options too. For instance, a light like this. If we could take a look at this, Samson, this is the Swarm 5 FX. And the Swarm 5 FX is a light that kind of does many different things in one. It has a laser, which is also great for effects. Lasers can create very dynamic aerial patterns when you're in a hazy environment like this or create dots on the floor 
that uh, are very kind of cool on a dance floor, um, but the, the beams of light look amazing. This is also a, a, an a effect light, so it creates moonflower effects, and it's also a strobe, so many different things in a light like this. Maybe something you want to take consideration of when you're building an effect light, because your beginning lighting rig should have a couple different effect lights. Um, keep in mind, many fixtures do double and triple duty. For instance, a moving headlight could also be considered a wash light depending on what you're using it for. Something like the four bar, when the patterns are chasing or the auto programs are going fast to sound, because of the sound activation mode, those become dynamic moving lights. So it's both a wash light and an effect light. And something like the Swarm 5FX is sort of all of this built into one single unit. So you may not have to get separate lasers, separate uh, uh, moonflower effect lights, a separate strobe light, when you can grab one or two of these and be very versatile in terms of effect lighting. So there's lots of different effects and lots of different options when it comes to adding dynamic, moving presentations to your light show. But certainly, effect lighting is something that you want to have in your beginning lighting rig. Now, what's going on here is definitely sensory visual overload, something you do not want to do when you're setting up your first rig. But obviously we're in the showroom here and for demonstration purposes this is really cool because it really highlights the effect that effect lighting can have, the dynamic movement. And there's all sorts of variations on this. So think about the effect that you want to create and be able to pick a couple specific fixtures. We have, for instance, lasers, a whole line of lasers that are available to you. And this is the Scorpion, and um, the, the lasers create, again, amazing aerial effects that when you have haze in the air, you can actually see those lasers, or projections on the wall so that the design on the wall is amazing as well. Things like this color band PIX-M, which is, has this dynamic movement, can sit on a floor. It can be mounted to a truss like it is here. Lots of different variations on this. The Intimidator Spot Duo is two moving heads on one bar, similar to the concept of the four bar, where we had four pars on one bar. We have two moving headlights on one bar that can be mounted horizontally, can be mounted vertically, it can sit on the floor. Lots of versatile options there. And if you're trying to get that moving head effect, there's two in one package right there that could be all the effect and light you need. So as you can see, it really creates a dance party, no matter where you're at. Color washes, effects, movements, creating that visual stimulus to continue to fill the dance floor, and it's really an important part of your first lighting rig. Now, let's talk about another category of lighting, which actually really isn't lighting per se, it's atmospherics, atmospheric effects. These things create drama, and they can create glamour. Um, because what they do is they actually add element to the air so that you can see some of these aerial visual effects very clearly. There's different categories of these just like in every other lighting category. For instance, we have the Nimbus, which is a dry ice, low-lying fog effect, which creates a, a virtual cloud on the floor, which is perfect for things like elegant first dances, father-daughter dances, wedding-related things, also theatrical uses. It's amazing. Things for uh, a Halloween-themed events or attractions. Um, it's an amazing effect, but so are the other amazing effects. At this very basic level, a haze machine adds particles to the air so that you can see the beams very clearly in the air. Now, the trick to atmospheric effects, obviously, is the venues that you're performing in. And some have very strict policies about using fog machines and haze machines and the different fluids that you can use in these machines, but essentially the machines take fluid and they convert them to an atmospheric particle that is then expelled into the room to create these atmospheres that are so dramatic and really, really cool. But they all have the ability to set off alarms depending on what sort of alarms there are. So before you go out and buy a bunch of haze machines and fog machines and aerial effects like that, um, you really be aware of the venues that you're performing in. Make sure you get clearance ahead of time. Make sure you know what type of alarms are in the system because no matter what anybody tells you, any atmospheric effect has the ability to set off an alarm depending on what the alarm is. 
Um, that's not to say they always will, but you have to have that as a consideration whenever you're using these things. But look at the amazing effect that you can achieve with them. And imagine this, if you're a band um, on a stage, uh, uh, an atmospheric effect like this, one of my favorites, the guys are RGB. This is a, a pyrotechnic effect that actually adds color LEDs to the, to the smoke. How dramatic is that? I mean, imagine if this thing were mounted inverted on a trussing system like the one we have here over a drum set. These things can be mounted upside down. They go in different colors. You can, you can, you can change the color of the, the burst of fog and you can adjust how that goes. You can mount them vertically so that the, the, the burst goes horizontally. Lots of different effect options there. And you can mix the colors that it's that are that are illuminating that fog an absolutely very cool uh, atmospheric effect so think about atmospheric effects where you are they certainly can add a whole nother dimension to your lighting whether it's your color wash system or your effect lighting um, very dramatic when you're talking about moving heads because you can see those beams move and in a theatrical setting for instance these beams of light can actually become architecture when you see them. They can become settings for different scenes and things like that. And it doesn't get any cooler than, you know, bursts of pyrotechnic fog when you're a band on stage. So think about your atmospheric effects as a mix to your lighting rig as well, because I guarantee you it's going to add a level of excitement and drama that you couldn't have imagined before. Now let's take a look at yet another category of lighting, accent lighting. This is great when you're working on special events like wedding receptions. So let's take a look at what this is all about. Accent lighting is fantastic when you are trying to highlight certain areas of a room, certain staging areas. Like for instance, the wedding cake at a wedding reception or the bridal table, the, the bridal party head table at a wedding reception. Um, things like the monogram gobos that we talked about are great for accent lighting. They can be projected onto a dance floor and have the bride and groom's initials on the dance floor. They can be projected onto the wall behind the head table. All things that create that sort of visual targets for your audience that draw the eye to these areas of a room. That's what accent lighting is all about. It could also be applied to a band situation as well. If you want to highlight certain players at certain times during solos and things like that, this is great for that. Um, and one of those great, great tools is another part of our Easy series, the Easy Pin. It's a pin spot. Let me show you. Uh, we'll get rid of this slim par, and I'll bring over this Easy Pin Pack. This is the Easy Pin Pack. It comes in this handy case, and it has a pack of six of these battery-powered pin spots that look just like this. Um, it's as uh, simple as flipping the light on, and you can see right off the bat, you are instantly pin spotting whatever area that you want to pin spot. The advantage to this again, because it's easy, it's wireless, it comes with scissor clips, so you can attach it to drop ceiling frames or air walls. The scissor clip also conveniently comes off and underneath is a very strong magnet, so it can attach to many metal surfaces in your area so that pin spotting suddenly becomes as easy as put that up there, put that up there, turn them on. They're also controllable with an included remote, so you can turn them on, turn them off. Um, it doesn't get any easier than that, thus the title Easy Pin. And th these are sold either individually or in a pack like this, the Easy Pin Pack, which has a pack of six plus a charger built right into the case. You just plug the charger into the wall, plug the lights into the charger in the case, and fire them up and this is good for any length of time that your special event might be up to about six or eight hours depending on how you use them. So um, pin spotting is a great way to use accent lighting to highlight certain areas of a room. Accent lighting is another very important category of lighting for you to be aware of when you're building your first lighting rig. So we've talked about color wash, we've talked about wash lighting, we've talked about effect lighting, we've talked about atmospherics, we've talked about accent lighting. And when you are building your rig, it's important to take all these things into consideration, figure out which tools you need. They all do different things. It's important for you to determine what 
the tools you need are for the job. Always pick the right tool for the job. Let's talk about a few little pitfalls that first time lighting users sort of can fall into very frequently and how to avoid them. So here are some things to consider when you're setting up your first lighting rig. You know, fixture placement is very important. Let's get that out of the way. It's important to know what space you're working in and how you're gonna place these. For instance, if you're using two four bars, they come with stands. So you have to just know that your color wash is gonna be on two stands and you have to figure out where those stands are gonna go. Putting your lights all in one place limits their coverage. So you wanna think about spreading that coverage out as much as you possibly can. Also remember, good cables are an investment. Just like good fixtures, just like good instruments and good amps and mics and everything else are an investment. Don't skimp out on the wires and the cables. They're very important to how your lights, if you're using still cable fixtures, which many are, to how they perform. So keep that in mind as well. Um, building a lighting rig from the ground up can get expensive quickly if you overdo it. Think about the right tool for the right job. And don't try to do everything all in one shot. You can build one layer at a time. Um, don't underestimate the importance of lighting. Keep in mind how important it is to your performance and the effect that it's having on your audience. I think a lot of people use it as an afterthought. And sometimes that can be a mistake. Most of the time that's a mistake. It's a primary tool for you to really enhance your performance. Don't underestimate its importance. Um, don't go for the cheapest, most inadequate lighting you can find. As with anything else, there are a million people putting fake and cheap offers for cheap lighting all over the internet. Beware of what you're buying. Invest wisely. Invest in quality gear that's going to last you and do the job you want it to do for you for quite a long time. And also take into consideration the service, the customer service that's available. Um, as you know, if you're a Guitar Center customer, their, their service is excellent. You can count on them when things go wrong, if things go wrong. It's the same with any other quality manufacturer and provider of gear. Um, so keep in mind, don't go for cheapy, cheap, cheap all the time. You're going to pay for it in the end. Um, how much electricity is at your disposal? What's your power situation? Are you using things like you know, a, a power converter or a surge protector and things like that to protect your gear? There's lots of weird variances in power from venue to venue to venue. And as you know, they can cause spikes and surges that can damage your gear. Some lighting requires a little bit too much of a power draw, which can do things like shut off breakers, which is a disaster in a live entertainment situation. It's happened to me, trust me, I know. Incandescent lights, again, draw a lot more power than LED lights do. So beware of your, uh, uh, of your power consumption needs and, and use that wisely because it's something that your, your whole performance can depend on. And buying too many lights, like I keep saying, don't overdo it. Um, you don't have to go crazy and think you're missing out on something. You need a good, balanced setup of wash and effect lighting and you're gonna be in great shape. Um, keep it simple, take advantage of things like sound active modes, foot switches, auto programming. Um, when you're just starting out, it could be easy to get a little uh, discouraged if you try to get too complicated too quickly. Um, keep in mind, we wanna be nimble, we wanna be quick, we wanna be easy on gigs so that we can concentrate on our performance. So when you're just starting out, keep it simple and take advantage of these auto things that are built into these fixtures that can really help you operate these lights effectively and easily. Um, you don't need to take that leap into you know, wireless DMX control right off the bat. Take it easy, have fun, build your rig from the ground up. Guys, that's my thoughts on building your first lighting rig. Lots to think about, I know, but it really is easy and it really is fun and most of all, it's going to help you make more money and make your gigs easier and more effective for your audiences. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm going to stick around for a little while and answer any questions or comments you have online. Please get involved and ask me anything you want to ask. We'd love to help you out. I also want to make you aware of a great resource 
um, in terms of more lessons and more classes and tutorials that we have available to you free of charge. It's called Chauvet DJ Academy. You register for Chauvet DJ Academy, and it's a series of online video classes ranging in topics, of course, from lighting to DMX control to um, anything to do with gigs, audio gear, safety, marketing, MC skills, any number of topics are found in Chauvet DJ Academy. You register, it's absolutely free, and as you watch a video, you take a quiz and you go to the next video and you get from one level to the other. So you start from beginner to intermediate to advanced to expert and you get rewards as you go along. So uh, definitely check out Chauvet DJ Academy. There's lots of great tutorials on just what we've been talking about today. It's www.chauvetdjacademy.com and there's links to a million other seminars and tutorials as well, so it's a great resource. Um, so I encourage you to check that out, continue learning, ask us questions. Once again, I'm Jeff Short with Chauvet DJ. Thanks so much for your time today, and we'll see you real soon.